After spending years in mediocrity, the Yu Yang is finally back. It's been buffed in the most recent patch, and I've played a couple games with it already. You'll notice at the bottom, there's a torpedo reload booster, and this is the massive change. Yu Yang suddenly is one of the best torpedo boats in the game, and it really comes down to the absolute strength that these deep water torps have, being that there's basically no reaction time. <laughs> If it's a cruiser or battleship or carrier, these torps are going to hit, do a ton of damage, and you're not going to be able to dodge them. So two hits already gives us 26,000 damage. And since the reload booster is so new, maybe he wasn't expecting it. Yeah, we kill a cruiser outright, a Johan De Witt, instantly to start this game. This ship, although it is a good tier 10 now, I would say, it's not the best gunboat. It was originally based on the Gearing platform, and at the time, I do think Gearing and Yu Yang were great gunboats. I especially enjoyed playing Yu Yang when it came out, since the shorter duration, faster cooldown smokes lended itself to a solo farming experience. And at the time, of course, we didn't have ships like the Small End, the um, Daring wasn't in the game, the Ragnar, Kleber, these, all of these extremely amazing gunboats weren't in the game. So gearing guns appeared to be very, very good. And unfortunately, as a part of the nerfs a long time ago to deal with the radar problem with that the Yu Yang had, the reload was nerfed. So we have a four second reload right now with Yu Yang guns. And just look at these arcs. Uh, they're not great. <laughs> this ship certainly is from a different time. You can tell that even from the fire chance of these guns. It's a 5% fire chance. Ships like the uh, Daring, the um, Brozovoy even, the Kleber for sure. There's a ton of ships that are in the game with a faster reload and much better fire chance and much better uh, shell velocity. So these guns are good in close range, but don't expect to be winning a ton of gunfights. I think the best part about the Yu Yang is its concealment with decent guns, the ability to ambush and take targets of opportunity. So in this first game, it ended pretty quick <laughs> and we managed to get three kills and a decent torpedo salvo off. But what you really wanna be doing, I think with these reload boosters is using it to create an entire impassable wall of torpedoes. That's kind of my thought process, especially in the early game. So thinking about where the enemy team is going to be and trying to create an entire wall of torps. So here we know this island here on the left is a incredibly important island for the enemy team. So we're going to launch our torpedoes to just barely miss it. You notice I waited long enough to get this torpedo angle. And then of course I'm using my booster right away to create an basically a second set of uh, extending the line out further away from this island. So I'm hoping that if the enemy team sees my first set of torpedoes, they're going to run away from the island that I torped. And once they do run away, they're going to get caught by the second set. That's the idea here. But you notice the time on the cooldown for this torpedo reload booster. It's four and a half minutes or even a little bit longer than that. So it's not like this 20 torp deep water salvo of torpedoes is going to be available all the time. But when it is, oh man, is it disgusting. <laughs> so we're going to get the Henry with two on our first salvo. We're going to hit the Ohio with another one. I mean, there's no reaction time to these torpedoes, so I can't really blame them for eating them. But uh, yeah, pretty good result. Taking out an entire full HP pool of a tier 10 cruiser. And that really helps our team because Henry is such a great long range farmer. So potentially our battleships are going to be able to survive for a little longer. But I'm not going to take gunfights unless I have help. So that's why I decided to run away here. You'll notice there's a gearing and a daring around here. And I was pretty much solo in the corner of the map where I was. So removing myself from that situation is definitely a good thing. Since again, the DPM is not great on these guns. But of course, it's very important to help out your fellow destroyers and uh, try and get some damage in on the enemy DDs when you can. Since the Yu Yang is a iteration of the gearing, the main reason I enjoyed it over the gearing back in the day was that it was smaller. You'll notice that 
it's way lower in the water and honestly the hull is just not as thick so this ship is not taking nearly the damage that gearing does it does not have the uh small armor belt that's i believe it's a 21 millimeter armor belt on the gearing i actually don't remember but it's enough to shatter some destroyer he and since the yuyang doesn't have that it's not quite as tanky when full broadside but honestly the ability to just have a smaller ship a smaller target to hit is way way nicer so i'm really really happy the Yu yang has been buffed it's not necessarily the buff i would have wanted um guns are just more consistent and i enjoy using them a little bit more but when these torpedoes hit it's a pretty incredible experience you'll also notice how good the concealment is on this ship if you haven't seen it for a while it's 5.8 kilometers which is pretty good considering a lot of these stealthy gunboats like the daring and some of the other ones are around a 6 6.2 kilometer concealment so it's enough that i have a concealment advantage over them and you'll notice here the smoke screen i can just pop it whenever i want to to save myself some hp because i have so many of them that's the real freedom of these pan asian destroyer smokes is that you don't have to feel like you have to save them if i was playing a gearing here I would have only four smokes maximum if I was taking Superintendent. And they, of course, last an extremely long time, but it means that I don't have another smoke screen available for an incredibly long period of time. And you see that with 13 and a half kilometer range on these torps, it's not as much as gearing, but it's enough to even catch that Ohio there. So very usable torpedoes in today's meta, I would say, especially given how stealthy the Yu Yang is and that it can kind of move around the map reasonably freely. The speed boost isn't really anything special, but this ship is reasonably fast and can get around and maneuver itself in the proper position to get off some reasonable torpedo strikes. And you notice the uh, Columbo here gets caught turning, so he actually ends up eating two torpedoes. It's that reaction time, this no reaction time torpedo. It It's really hard to dodge, guys. It's one of the scariest torpedoes in the game because you know there's no way for you to react to it. You just have to hope you're predicting and what you know about where the Yu Yang has been is enough to dodge the torpedoes. Unfortunately, though, this game is not looking so hot for our team, so I decide to go in and try and kill this Elving. Switching to the Armor Piercing gets us some pretty good damage, and unfortunately, I'm not quite able to squeeze through here. I might have been able to kill that Elving had I squeezed through that torpedo salvo, but uh, I had to do something. Taking the fight at range probably would have resulted in a loss anyway, so I had to take the risk of the torpedoes anyway. Unfortunately, I failed, but the Yuyang is pretty decent in those positions since it has uh, two-thirds of its firepower up front. The ship is pretty solid again. I am really, really glad that the Yuyang is back and playable. You'll notice here the Missouri is going to eat three torpedoes, where... If this had been a gearing, I think he would have spotted the torpedoes soon enough to where that first torpedo, the one that hit him in the bow, he probably would have dodged. He would, could have turned in and dodged it. So I only would have hit two. That's the strength. That's the real strength of these uh, torpedoes. Unfortunately, there's a massive downside though. They don't hit destroyers. And we're gonna see that as a big issue coming up in the later couple of games. But for now, we're going to annoy this Missouri by hitting him with three torpedoes, taking over half of his health, and getting a lucky fire at the very end as we go dark. <laughs> yeah, so even with not a great fire chance, RNG can still be quite kind to you and gift some free damage. The armor piercing, of course, is great when you're fighting against battleships with a soft upper belt. So Jean Bart, 32 millimeter upper belt, it's going to shatter our HE but our armor piercing can certainly get through it. And this here is the big deal with these deep water torpedoes. I'm putting them in a general area to try and deny this push from the enemy team. And we're gonna do a decent job here, spreading out the damage, trying to hit a few targets here. And since it's a Cossack leading the way, a tier eight DD, but that tier eight DD has pretty decent guns, extremely short duration, fast cooldown smokes, and better concealment than us. And this is the issue. My torpedoes would have been perfect to take him out. We do take out the Napoli, which is great, but of course the torpedoes pass right underneath this Cossack. So unfortunately, he is in an advantage state. Of course, the Nevsky and Vladivostok helping him out, 
and I have to smoke and run away. This game has very much gotten away from us. So again, not going to be a win. I had a lot of reasonably quick games I found. There weren't a lot that went into the late game where I had a lot of opportunity to carry. A lot of blowout wins, a lot of blowout losses. So this one, even though we don't have the most damage yet, it's shown potential. I really do see the potential now in the Yu Yang. Whereas before, after it got nerfed, and I felt like it just really didn't have a place at tier 10 anymore. I felt like, why would I play this over the gearing anymore? Just better guns, better torps overall. And if I wanted a radar destroyer, well, I'm probably gonna be playing Smallend or Ragnar. <laughs> Although that's not the best example, since those are special ships that not everyone can get. The Yu Yang though is a great ship again, and I really do like it for this torpedo salvo role. Even though it doesn't quite have the torpedo power of something like the Shimakaze, for example, I really do love these deep water torpedoes. Shimakaze torps are spotted from the moon. They're very, very easy to dodge. The Yu Yangs are not. Even though they don't quite do the damage, they don't have the uh, alpha strike potential, the ship is really a solid torpedo boat again because of those amazing deep waters and the lack of reaction time and the ability to. Um, shoot 20 of these torps every four and a half, five minutes is pretty solid, honestly. And here in this last game, it's a massive blowout, so I'm not going to show it all to you, but uh, again, another example of these torpedoes not being the most useful in the early game, where I'm trying to put these torpedoes in such a position where they could hit a cruiser, they could hit a pushing battleship, but at the same time, they could hit where a destroyer is. You notice that smoke screen popping up there where a DD is going to be, and our torpedoes are gonna pass right under their ships. There's a Holland there, as well as a Forest Sherman, and uh, the Sherman is a terrifying destroyer. That is a very, very good tier 10, and if we had landed a torpedo on him early in the game, I think that might have uh, dealt with him a little bit sooner. Uh, as you can see here, He's still got quite a bit of health. I skipped forward just a little bit. Um, but since he's behind the island, I can push in and hopefully deal with this Holland. So I don't want to say this ship is just all great. The massive weakness of the DPM is still here. These guns are not great. They're incredibly floaty. They do okay damage, but don't have great fire chance and don't have amazing pen. The reload, of course, is the biggest issue with them. The torpedoes, though, are terrifying and extremely good again, which is nice, but uh, it still has this radar thing. And I don't think you should be running the radar in random battles. The smoke is just that much better. But for certain niche comp settings, maybe running this ship with radar would be all right. But again, Smallend and Ragnar are just better options with the radar destroyer role. So a pretty decent set of games given how quickly most of them ended. And I really am glad that Wargaming is looking at some of these older ships that could use a little bit of love. As for the build I've gone for on the Yu Yang, it is the full torpedo boat survivability build. We're trying to get as much HP as possible, trying to get, use all of our consumables to survive and launch as many torpedoes as possible. Pretty standard, I would say, going for a torpedo build. Trying to get the speed of the torps up, reload them quicker, all of that. Certainly, you could run a gun build here, but I would ask why you're not playing a gearing, or even better yet, a daring for this uh, six-gun gunboat layout. I think the daring especially is the best version of this ship if you're going for a gun build. Um, this ship definitely wants to be a torpedo boat now, especially with this new upgrade, this new consumable that allows us to instantly refresh the torpedoes. Takes a while for them to, this consumable to reload, but uh, 20 deep water torpedoes that are doing uh, 18,800 damage and they travel at 76 knots, that is pretty terrifying. And I think a good reason to even get the Yu Yang again. This is a ship that I really didn't recommend people would get anymore, but uh, now that it has this torpedo reload booster, I think it's a pretty solid option and very much worth grinding again. So. That's my first look at the buffed Yu Yang. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. I'm pretty excited about this ship and I'll be definitely playing it some more. If you're interested in watching the full games that I cut up for today's video, you can find them on my second channel and the link for that will be in the description down below. 
and I, every once in a while, am also live streaming. So if you want to watch that, um, that link is also found in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.